Have you been looking for a tool with adequate power and a tool that's lighter than the standard Parkside impact wrench? Well, I think I've got just the tool for you. This is the other option. It comes in at about 700 grams lighter. It is the Parkside impact driver into an impact wrench conversion. Let's see how it came about. So how did this thing come about? Well, let me show you. First up, You go to Lidl and buy a 20 volt Parkside impact driver. It comes in a quarter inch anvil form and we need to change that to a half an inch anvil. This is the B2 version. However, it's the same thing and the same result for the A1 version as well. There are a couple of different ways in which we can go about this, and I will show you all of them. Option one, option two. Now, let me show you what I mean. This is option one, an anvil with an 18 millimeter shaft diameter, a five millimeter base, a steel metal bushing, 24 millimeters outside diameter, 15 millimeter height, and 18 millimeter inside diameter, a washer, 18 millimeter inside diameter, that's the important bit, and two millimeter height. The other option, an anvil with a 16 millimeter shaft diameter, and it comes with a base that is a height of six millimeters. So if you get it with the six millimeter base height, you've got two options. You can either get rid of one millimeter here, which you can do on a bench grinder, or you can keep it at a six millimeter base height. And then, because the original is a two millimeter washer here, you can use a one millimeter washer like so. Links for all of this are down in the video description. Now, when doing these, I like to stick to the original as much as I can. So for me, I have reduced this from six millimeters to five millimeters. On the inside, not much to go wrong. It's a single speed, so the electrons go from the battery terminal here through this LED to the trigger switch and then the motor, which drives the hammering mechanism in the front casing. As I said, not much to go wrong with these. In fact, I've never actually seen a hammer mechanism go wrong on these unlike on the Parkside Performance C3 impact driver. Now, get rid of the old anvil by getting rid of this clip here. Which, as you can see, is not the easiest of tasks. And what you have in here needs to be removed as well. This sort of washer needs to go and we need to remove this big metal washer. And now it's time to remove the old bushing. To remove the old bushing from the casing, you have a couple of options. You can either hammer it out or you can use a 30 millimeter socket, let's say, and put it on the vise. Now watch the magic happen. And there you go, the casing free of the old bushing. And now you can see why I like using steel ones. They're pretty much exactly the same as the original part. And after we've removed the old bushing, it's just a question of reversing the process and fitting in the new one. For this one, we'll fit the 18 millimeter anvil. And we've got two options. We can either go for a full metal washer or we can still use this big metal washer that came in the original tool. And on top of that, 
we can fit one of these plastic washers. And you can do the same thing with the anvil that has a 16 millimeter shaft. Plastic washer and the original metal one on top. Or if you choose to go with the six millimeter base of the anvil and not work on that, just get rid of all this and go for a one millimeter washer because this one is a two millimeter one. So what needs to happen is that the base of the anvil plus the washer need to have a height of seven millimeters. And how you go about achieving that is up to you. You can go for a five millimeter base of the anvil and a two millimeter washer, or you can go for a six millimeter base of the anvil and a one millimeter washer. Again, I prefer to stick to the original idea. Impact mechanism goes back in place. Everything moves smoothly without too much resistance. That needs to be the case. And as easy as that, the time has come to put it back together. Nothing too difficult here, really. Links to all this stuff, as well as some other information for this conversion, will be down in this video's description. I believe all good ideas have to be tested, so let's do just that. This is an M20 bolt going into this vise here. This is the big lump, apparently 400 Newton meters, if you ask Parkside. However, safe to say nowhere near that. I believe this is the B2 version made by Grizzly Tools. full 4 amp battery on its max setting. This is the one we've converted, B2 version, only a forward and reverse, no other modes to select from. A variable speed trigger, if you consider that a luxury. Let's see if the B2 impact wrench can remove that. Also, let's not forget that with the converted tools, with the combination anvils, you can do something which you can't do with the impact wrench because it does not have an opening for bits.